Planning and Zoning Board, Thursday, September 3rd, 2015, and the meeting will come to order. Our first item is our preliminary matters uh, from the from the board and or the staff. Is there any additions or deletions? Staff has no additions. No. Moving on to public comment. Public comment is now open, and you are welcome to come to the podium and speak on any subject during this period of time. If you would like, though, you'll have a second. Uh, no, forgive me, not in quasi judicial, right? So if you would like to speak on something that's come before us today, please come up and speak now on that subject. So it's open for discussion. Seeing nobody coming forward, I will now, sir, come ahead. Are you saying that if I want to speak after Mr. O'Hare makes his presentation, I'm not allowed to speak? That's correct. Not in no, that, that's not true. You'll be able to speak at the time that we bring that quasi-judicial hearing forward, but not now on that matter, because you need right. to be sworn, sworn in to in. speak. Exactly. Forgive me, I misspoke, I think. Yes. I'll stand corrected. Go sit down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing nobody else, then I will close public hearing. The first one is a uh, variance application submitted by Michael O'Hare to allow the construction of a covered parking space carport in the required setback at 455 Gray Twig Road, and the number is V15000005. And on this one, the um, disclosure by Planning and Zoning Board, does anybody have any ex parte communication? No. None. Staff? Okay, well, now then we will go to a swearing in of the applicants. If you raise your right hand, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Any exhibits we have to, okay. Uh, staff going to make the presentation. Who's going to make it, Tim? Uh, Gail will make the Gail presentation. Gail will make the presentation, okay. Uh, this requested variance is to allow the construction of a carport in the, it would encroach a maximum of five feet into the side yard setback, which in the R1A zoning district is 15 feet. Um, and records from the property appraiser's website shows that this home was constructed in 1956. And um, at the time that the home was built, the side yard setbacks in the R1A zoning district were either uh, 15 feet or 10 percent of the width of the front building line of the property, whichever was smaller. And at that time, the required side yard setbacks for this home was 9.5 feet. Uh, the side yard setbacks now <coughs> have been changed to 15 feet and and doing a little reading through our numerous old codes, I discovered that that was changed in 1968. And in order for the board to grant a variance, uh, the applicant uh, has to satisfy two sections uh, from the code, section 66.02 and 66.03. And on section 66.02, uh, the board shall deny the application if any of the following are found, which I have listed in your memo. And then uh, section 66.03, uh, this will give you uh, the specific review criteria for the variance application. And the first item is that the application of the zoning ordinance causes an exceptional and unique hardship. And the applicant um, believes that it does because the home was, when the home was constructed, it met setback requirements and that um, it, um, The original carport it was converted into a porch, and they would like to build, you know, extend a carport um, in front of that area. And staff's analysis, we believe that the code does not cause a unique hardship because at the time the house was built, it met the setback requirements. Those have since changed and have been changed for many years. Um, the second 
uh, finding is that the exceptional and unique hardship is not duly due solely to the owner's action. And the applicant believes that the encroachments existed when the home was purchased and was not caused by the applicants and were not encroachments when the house was built, which is correct. Uh, but we do do not believe that there is an exceptional and unique hardship because at the time when the property's owners bought the house, they would have become aware of the setback um, encroachment during due diligence. And the third item is that the re variance granted will be compatible with the physical characteristics of the neighborhood. And the applicant believes that it will, because it will be con incorporated into the facade of the existing structure while reducing on-street parking and uncovered parking. And we believe that the granting of the variance would extend a non-conforming setback for the carport and not be compatible with today's R1A setback requirements. And the fourth item is that the variance granted will be in harmony with the intent and purpose of the code. The applicant believes that it will because the setback will continue as it has for decades while conversion of the driveway and previous carport area will be incorporated under the main structure of the roof line. Staff believes that it will not be in harmony with the intent of the code, um, as mentioned before, because it increases a nonconformity. And this is a large piece of property for a single family home, and we believe that there are other areas that they could uh, put parking, covered parking, on this property. Uh, there's room to have a driveway around the back of the house or on the other uh, eastern side of the property. And the final finding is that the variance granted is the minimum necessary to or necessary in order to alleviate the exceptional and unique hardship. The applicant believes it is. And we do not believe that there is an exceptional and unique hardship for this property. <coughs> and in reviewing, staff um, finds that the request to allow the encroachment into the side yard for the construction of the carport would uh, does not meet the standards of review and set set forth in section 66.02 and 66.03 and we feel that the need for the variance was created and this was left off by the homeowner's request to um, construct the carport and we are recommending denial because the request does not meet the requirements set forth in section 66.02 and 66.03. Questions of staff? <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to just understand the history a little bit. And when this was built in 56, their side lot yard setback was 9.5 feet. On you the had, west. the code stated that the side yard setbacks in the R1A zoning district would be 15 feet right. or 10% um, of the width of the building area, whichever was smaller. And so it did come down to 9.5. Is that, that how it was built at that point? It, was, it actually has a 10-foot side yard setback. It had 10. Mm -hmm. And so this five-yard thing that's being requested now, is there an existing carport on it? Is that... I had no, there, it, I believe there was the a carport cement. at one time, but it was converted to a porch. Okay, is there uh, some kind of application or, or no? Where it was altered, so we don't know when no. or how. No, or, there's okay. nothing in our files. Did it have a roof on it at that it, point? It has a roof. It's and, it's a porch. And so another roof was not put on. They just converted the use. It, it, we have no record in our file. It looks like it was just converted to a porch um, years ago prior to our keeping records here. And so, so the driveway was used as, as the parking? The driveway is for parking. Okay. So originally there mm. was a carport. And That's then my they, understanding. And the width of that carport was within uh, the guidelines? Yes, it, it had the 10-foot side yard setbacks. 
Are they looking to just convert the use, or are they looking to new construction? New construction, I see. Okay. May I ask, uh, uh, what I don't understand is uh, there's a drawing we have right here, this drawing, and it doesn't, it doesn't have a page number on it. Okay. And it shows me two things. I'm, I'm a little, well, I tried to look at the pictures then to relate to this. The first small box to the left front of the home, there's a smaller box. Is that the existing porch? The existing porch is, I believe it's got a nine foot. Yes. And then the carport is what extends out. That's the proposed carport. Okay, so at one time, you could, I don't believe you could have got a car in that front part there, which is now a porch. So at Doesn't one time, was like that it. larger and then was made smaller to make a porch? I don't know. Okay, I'll ask a good question a second time. So then the new dotted lines, if you were going to call it that, mm -hmm. is a, an extension of, the proposed to make carport. it back into a full-size carport. That's my understanding. And they're running at the same parallel line along the property yeah. line as the existing porches. So where's the side yard setbacks. Okay. Yeah, that's an extension of the nonconformity to do that. At their front yard, is there any nonconformity with the new garage as far as a no, front line setback? The front setback. The front setback. There's not a problem with the front setback. Because it looks like from the pictures, it's set pretty far it, back. It, it is road. set very far back. In yes. fact, what's not shown in there, they could probably put that carport up in the front, too, as well as on the side. Like okay. the circular I, I drive. Try, I was trying right. to understand that. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, as far as conforming to the rest of the neighborhood, do we see similar situations there? Some of the older homes have setbacks like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm still not understanding this diagram. The floor plan. Mm -hmm. So the dotted. Do we have? Do we have that to show screen. up here on the screen? I think that mm -hmm. would help. No. Okay, okay, but anyway, the the drawing that shows the dotted lines right and. So move furthest to the bottom of the page. Here, right? mm -hmm. That's the proposed. So how is that encroaching an additional five feet? It's encroaching along the side, side yard, yard line. See, but and that's an extent. That's an, a non-conforming extension under the way we apply the code. Okay. Oh, so yard. the house itself is now, and that's because it was already in. Yes. In it before. On that side yard. So now to okay, I get it. Now I get it. Yeah. So if they were to add it in that particular place, they would have to come over another five feet. And then start it, or they could, if they were to be with. But the they have room on that property if they wanted to have a driveway going around to the back, or right. something on the other side, or a circular driveway, because they the house is set back um, forty. It looks like forty-five feet from the front property line. Right. So I'm wondering if the hardship is also a financial hardship because to put that driveway all the way to the back well they don't have to do that well, because the do. finance is not a hardship okay I you, you understand yeah, yeah. finance okay. isn't considered so yes. finance not considered okay no. it just seems like i mean as i said i think they could put it up towards the front too they don't have to put a driveway all the way to the back all right okay i get it okay mm. On the uh, overhead picture on page one uh, that's in the um, middle lot is that correct the top top middle of the page yes He's and so this really would come five feet to the property line it would be 10 feet from the property line it's the code today requires 15 feet right okay yeah. I have a I have a question please can you tell me if the existing carport is an addition to the original house or if it was constructed at the time of the original house. There is no car. There, there is no carport. There, from what I understand, there was a carport that was converted to a porch. Okay. Ask another question. If the present porch, which was thought to have been a carport, was it built with the original house construction, or was it an add-on at some point? There's nothing in our records that reflect when well, that was built. I mean, have you seen the property? I haven't seen the property, but we have to assume we don't have the records on that. that it would have been consistent with whatever a lot of in the press. We're not getting, are, yeah, that's not 
Yeah, we didn't look at that specifically to w determine whether that was a violation or anything. Because no. I can't tell from the pictures whether the roof line. Uh, they could have put a roof. They could have put a roof line. They could have enclosed the uh, porch, and we wouldn't consider even. Even if under the new code, they could have done something with that porch without extending the nonconformity. Right. I'm you just understand? trying. Okay. I'm just trying to establish a timeline as to where that that porch came about. Yeah. Uh, well, the code did change in '68, requiring the 15-foot side yard setbacks. So it could have occurred prior to '68 or after. N no, because no. The Side yard setbacks were 50. That would have extended the side at the encroachment on the side yard after 68. Okay. I mean, that's the best we have, can do. There must have been a reduction of his carport at one time, also. I, I'm still trying to grapple with that because you can't get a carport car yeah. in that carport. Well, well, there could have been there could have been other things done to that house. I mean, okay. it's hard to tell by just looking at the size of the porch. You're right. What's that dimension? Tim, um, a question about stormwater um, runoff, because don't, don't today's codes take into account how stormwater runs off your property? Well, under a site plan approval, they would go through that to handle the stormwater, yes. And does this impact this decision at all? Have you looked at no, it? No, no. Your decision is based on the merits of this case, whether it meets the criteria for a, for a variance, whether or not the... the the permitting can be done for it. Obviously, if you were to grant the variance, they would go in the permitting process and they'd have to meet those requirements, which would be storm Thank water. Thank you. Good. Of one of many. You're looking at 62.02 and 60, I'm sorry, 66.02 and 66.03. Oh, both, both That's them. the domain for variance right. criteria. Good. Thank you. Mm. Okay. And it um, has to meet all of those. On the um, drawing rendition, which has all the dotted lines on it, um, the first part of it um, that has the dotted line going across it is, does that mean that they're going to try and retain the porch area and add on the carport area in front of it? I think the, uh, Mr. O'Hara could answer that. Um, okay. And just one other question. Um, on the two uh, pictures, there's the one picture, which is hard to describe, this one here, which shows a canopy in front of what appears to be the porch area now. And in the second picture from the appraiser's office, it shows that it's closed in and has a roof line. So at one point, it looks like it was opened as a carport and then closed in. Yeah, and, I, and you could have done that even though uh, as long as the, the, the extension of that carport it wasn't extended, mm -hmm. probably the awning would have been a violation since it extended. But the enclosure of that would have been all right to do, whether they got a permit or not. I mean, it right, could have been permitted. Right, that was my next question. Yes, it could have been permitted. Okay. Thank you. Any additional uh -huh. questions of staff? <clears throat> Ken? Okay. None. Well, I think it's, do you want to have the applicant come up then? Yeah. This is Mr. O'Harry, I believe you were sworn in, correct? I was. Okay. For your records, my name's Michael O'Hare. <clears throat> I'm a lawyer with offices on Cardinal Drive in Bureau Beach. And I'm here on behalf of the Wilsons, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, who are the applicants. And I'd like to hand out <coughs> a few graphics to each of you because I don't trust the overhead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. You? No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> For the record. These are really good ones. And the first sheet. That's from the property. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. At least the pictures are good. 
see what's there. Okay. 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 Thank you. I think the photographs help a little bit with understanding what we're talking about. I do. And uh, I have a history with Gray Twig. In 1956, when this house was built, I was a senior in the Vero Beach High School, and I dated a girl who lived on Gray Twig. <laughs> and at that time, it was the remnants of a boom time, 1920s boulevard. Uh, and it had two lanes with a median. And uh, sometime around 1956, that boulevard was uh, covered in on one side, and the north side was vacated and abandoned and went to the owners of the property who boarded the property, um, or boarded the, the road. And the arrow points to, in the, in the aerial, the arrow points to the houses that now exist. And I had forgotten until I took a look at this aerial how deep those lots off of Great Twig are. It's about a half an acre, which is extraordinarily large. Um, and you can see on the west side, the left side of the picture, that's the, that's the setback side that we're looking at. And this shows the house as it was constructed and in its present location. And you can see, obviously, on the west side of the house, the setback is much smaller than it is on the east side of the house. The, at the time that the house was built, in 56, that was permissible, and it was not an encroachment of any kind. The next photograph shows the house as it exists today. And you can see the porch area, which is under roof behind the lattice on the left-hand side of the picture. And at one point in time, that was a garage, or a carport, rather, that came out from the house proper. And the slab was poured so that the slab was underneath the entire house. And where the carport was, the slab continued, of course, out into the driveway where you could park your cars. At some point in time, before my clients bought the property, the carport was eliminated. And what was a flat roof structure originally was roofed by my clients with a pitched roof. But you can see that the pitched roof ends where the uh, present day porch with the lat behind the lattice uh, ends also. So there is no encroachment there. What happened when the conversion to a porch occurred, and I'm, I'm speculating here, was that a part, not the entire carport was enclosed, but let's say the north half of the carport was enclosed. And the, other, and the car, remainder of the carport continues to exist in a bricked area, uh, which you can see on the overhead, or the drawing in front of you. And you can see the bricked area with the porch uh, to the west of the, or to the left of the bricked area. And what is proposed is to recreate the carport, leaving the porch where it is, and adding to the carport an additional four or five feet so that it is the length of what a car would be. And the roof will be projected, and there is a drawing there, I think, with dash lines showing proposed constructions. Might be the last one. And the roof will be extended from the porch out over the carport. It will not be enclosed on, with walls, but the roof will be extended. And the reason for the request is this, this has not been an encroachment or a violation since 1956. And that's what, 50 years ago, a little more than 50 years ago. Thank you. Um, it's been there for, for six decades now. And the porch has been there for six decades. Not a full grown carport. We don't know when that ceased to exist. But what's proposed is to restore the carport. And the reason for it is my clients have been in the house a little over two years, I think, maybe one year and some. And they have, they're from Upper Virginia. And they've discovered that off season and maybe on season too, leaving a car out in the sun uncovered all day can warm it up pretty good by the end of the day and make it very uncomfortable to get in. And uh, that's not something they thought about coming from Virginia when they bought the house, 
but now they'd like to have the carport back. And I hear Tim say, well, they can put a carport on the other side of the house, or it's a big lot, they can put it down the back of the house. The, it looks to me like the um, setback on the other side of the house is around 15 feet. And your average traffic lane, I mean for a one direction lane of traffic, is around 12 feet, I believe. So that leaves you three feet to spare between the building and the property line. And that's a very awkward driveway. But even assuming it were there and practicable to put in place, you need to think about the location of the inside of the house, which is shown on the same graphic that I gave you the last page. And it makes a certain amount of sense, I think, to have the car parking, the carport, and or garage as proximate to the kitchen as you can possibly make it. If it went down the other side of the house, yes, you could, and then you could enter the house through the master bedroom, perhaps. If you put the garage on, you, I doubt you could, could put a garage on the other side. It'd have to be on the back. And you could curve around the house, maybe, and come in in the bedroom. Or you could put one in front, because there is quite a bit of front yard there, 45 feet of it. And you could go right into the living room. Um, the clients, for obvious reasons, would like not to have to relocate the kitchen with the relocation of plumbing and electrical and all of that, and would like to locate the car entry to the house and parking from the closest position to the kitchen as they are able. And that also makes sense to me. Uh, I've never been a housewife, so I don't know how I can speak with much authority on that, but I've watched for almost 60 years how my housewife does it, and uh, that's what she prefers. So. Having said all of that, and I hope I've answered some of your questions about what was where and when it was, I don't know when the conversion was made, but I do know that there was a garage or carport on the original footprint of the house. What we're asking for is not to increase a pre-existing um, encroachment. At the time the building was built, there was no encroachment. It was, it was in compliance with the code then in effect. It was not the landowner's doing or fault or blame that the, land, uh, that the uh, setback line shrank by five feet. The house was already constructed, the slab was in, the cement blocks were in place, the trusses were on, and they couldn't very well take a, uh, a saw to the house to make it comply with the changed ordinance. Nobody would. We're talking about a matter of, I'm guessing, 80 to 100 square feet, an eight-foot addition, within the same line of construction as the entire west side of the house, as it exists now. It would be a prolongation of the porch wall and what was the existing west boundary of the original carport or garage. And it's only for so long as is needed to be able to pull a carport in without doing playing havoc with the structure itself, or doing away with the porch for that matter, which has been wired and has a fan or something in it and electrical that isn't suitable for a carport. And, and when staff says that the code does not cause a unique hardship, I'm reading now from their report to you, in that the house met the 56 side yard setbacks. And I don't know how you can say that. Um, if it met the 56 side yard setbacks, how in the world is it saying that the code is causing the hardship when my clients are not allowed to restore it to its condition, basically, as it was when it was built in 1956? The location of the carport is the same, measuring east to west. There is a five-foot extension, southerly, to permit the length of a car to come under roof. But that's all we're asking for. And as I said at the beginning, this is an extraordinarily large lot. But as large as it is, with the house in place, it does not lend itself very well to putting a garage in the front yard that works practically, or in extending the driveway uh, along the east side of the house from uh, the road. And, and I, I don't see how the hardship, 
derives from anything but the fact that the house was already in place when the code was changed. That's when the hardship occurred. And of course, now it's come home to roost. Um, uh, Stafford says that uh, it does not believe that there is an exceptional unique, unique hardship. I'm, I'm sure there are other circumstances within the city of Vero Beach that are similar to this, but nobody's come to ask me to deal with them. Uh, driving up and down Gray Twig, I didn't see anything similar. And I think this was one of the earlier houses on Gray Twig. Uh, in 1956, I don't believe Mockingbird was even paved. It was a dirt road past Gray Twig. So <clears throat> we, are, we, are, we are taking the non-conforming situation, non-conforming only because the code was changed after the house was built, and extending it for a distance of five feet towards the street in order to preserve and make it harmonize with whoever built the porch built in its place. Um, I'm happy to uh, answer any questions that the board might have or clarify any issues I might have uh, obscured, which happens. Questions the board? I have Ken? one. Well, let, let Ken go. Oh. I'll cut his eye first. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The photo that you gave us, Mr. Hare, the colorful one? Right. Okay, looking at the existing um, <clears throat> porch, where it sits now, mm -hmm. you're going to. What you're saying is, from look at look at the photo to the left, right where that post is, where yes. it comes down to the ground, five foot in front of that. Is that what you're talking about? Five no, foot I'm, addition. No, Ken. I'm talking about what I was told is that the lattice work will be removed. Yes. And it will come five feet forward from the lattice work. All right, five foot forward from the lattice work, and then they'll tie into the existing roof as it sits now. Yes, well, they will extend the roof. Oh, extend it. will tie into it. Right. And then the it's going to be open? Yes. Not closed in. Okay. That's it on my questions. Was there another question? Yes. Um, Mr. O'Hare, uh, looking at that same picture, um, the width of the building is not going to be extended to the outside of the roof Absolutely line. Absolutely not. It won't change at all. All right, so it's it's just going to be the length of the carport we're That's talking correct. about. Okay, thank you. One more question, Mr. Chair, if I could, please. And Mr. O'Hare, if I understand you correctly, the when this home was built, this additional five foot that's going to be in front of the, what we're calling in front of the porch, it was already like that many years ago. I believe it was from what I've seen, yes. Okay, thank you. And I, I, I question the five feet. I, I, if I use, try to use the best scale I can up here, I'm going to guess it has to come out more than five. If the dotted box that you've created here, it, it must I be don't know whether it's to scale or not. Yeah, and I, I would guess that it, yeah. it looks more like 12 feet to me, and that was my guess. It's larger than five feet. It's it, larger than the existing... Correct. That was, right. that was what I use as my right. analysis, but it's not... Yeah. I don't it was have a my calculator. understanding that half of the carport was made into the porch when the building had a flat roof. But even the box is drawn right now. The newer box, the proposed box closest to the street, is significantly larger than the box that contains the porch right now. Okay, so it would be the difference. And I'll defer to your calculation. And I don't have a calculation. It's, it's, okay. it's a visual. <laughs> Neither do I. And, and Mr. Chair, for clarity purposes, because they're asking for a variance, I would think the board would need to know how much further out is it going? Is it five foot like Ms. O'Hare stated? And it's and what he's saying here is it was similar many years ago when the when the slab was poured. Are we going to do five foot, ten foot, twelve foot, fifteen foot? And I think the board needs to know how much. Yeah, I totally agree. I was and I, I can't quarrel with that, Ken. And I'm looking at this sketch, which I think is the same one. Right, you're so we at. have it on right. record. What yeah. is it? I would, looking at the dimensions that are shown, and if I can read them because it's been reduced, this was scaled a quarter to one foot, but of course it's reduction from that. It looks as though the dimension east and west of the porch and the proposed carport is approximately 10 feet. 
and it looks to me like the extension from the line of the house that goes all the way across would be east and west 12 feet. Uh, Mr. Hare, as, as a uh, former builder, uh, my garage recollections for a basic one car garage is 10 by 20, and that's what was called the industry norm for a garage. Okay. Most people wouldn't like that garage, it's a little tight, um, but that was the norm. And uh, I, I have a, just a suggestion. I, I don't think your client has really done a, a significant challenge. He hasn't been challenged enough by the, the architect or themselves to look at some other possibilities that are out there that they haven't chosen to look at. For example, if we would look, if you want to take that same carport we're looking at the way you proposed it, I could move it five feet from where the, where the existing porch is to my right, and which would be, I don't think, I think that's to the south, is that correct? East. 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 Okay. That would be east. The east. Five feet to the east. And then put your carport on, and it would not block the front door. It might block the front window to the house a little bit, but that would accommodate, and you wouldn't be any violation at all. Uh, and I don't know how the roof ties in there again, but uh, you, I just see I see coming in from the front as a, as a drive that comes in and curved. You can actually put it with the space that I've been done my calculation is you can put a two-car garage in the front if you come in from the street from the right side as you face the home turn left in the garage you can actually put a two-car garage there and i think whether it's a carport or two-car carport or two-car garage it would still meet the code and not be in any violation you just wouldn't have to take it clear to the property and take it to the existing property line which is 15 now there's that a problem some, with that uh, if i may okay well if you will look at the photograph to me it shows the problem there's a tree there yes and you can see where the driveway exists currently. And you can see where the slab of the one-time garage or a, park, a carport okay. rises above the level of the driveway. I see that. Okay. I, I think that what they, were, mm -hmm. what they had in mind was aligning the I parking agree. spot no, with five, the driveway five, rather than trying over. to rework the driveway. That's a sign. We'll and I say that's really not, I don't think, in my opinion, papers. that's not a big deal. And I think there's no compliance issue if they try, attempted that. I believe that's what was, what was in mind. And that's the problem with trying to rearrange everything eastward. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Sure. Mr. O'Hare, you were kind enough to give us this aerial yes, photograph, sir. and I'd like to refer you to the property to the west, the neighbor's property to the west. Do you know what uh, whether that particular property and their west uh, property line and uh, improvement of the property to the west conforms? It looks pretty tight from the from the photograph, but I must say on the west side. But well, you don't know whether. It but does I don't or does know. Not. And that side, of course, is is built in length, east to west, rather than, I mean, north to south, rather than east to west. Mm -hmm. But I I don't know how close they are to their west line. Along those lines, would you all like me to read you the definition of a unique hardship under Florida law? It is, a variance is authorized if due to circumstances unique to the applicant's property itself and not shared by any other property in the area, there exists an undue and unnecessary hardship created by the zoning regulations. That's not self-created. Along with the other criteria in your list. And I, I think I understand what Peggy is saying, but that, that's what the lawyers say. A hardship is and what we say a hardship is is sometimes hard to grasp uh, just because we say it the way we say it but I don't think that even taking into account the neighbor's house there is another house within this particular block that um, that shows a side setback of the same dimension as this house does but I would also say that I don't think when this house was built that many of the other houses westerly of it had been built yet. So I don't, don't know whether that's the case or not. 
The reason I asked that question was because of uh, question number three under uh, section 6603 as to whether uh, this property would be compatible uh, with uh, other physical characteristics of the neighborhood, neighboring property being um, such a uh, such a subject. I see what you mean, yeah. When this was used as a uh, carport originally and then converted to a porch, did any of that um, square footage become part of the house and so the porch became smaller? I can't answer that question. Okay. I can't answer it. Okay. Uh, I rather doubt it, though, because it, it is a cement block house and I think the back wall of the carport of the garage could not have been moved around very handily. Okay. Just space is an issue. <laughs> Mr. Hare, one of the places you uh, mentioned, and I'm looking through my paper quickly, and it said something about a, there's no parking issue on Gray Twig, is there at all? On street parking? It was referred to someplace in my notes that there was some issue about parking on street. Well, there is an issue to the extent that when you've got a car or worse yet, two cars in the driveway, guests have to park on the street. And like every other residential street in the Central Beach area, you, you've all had the case where the yard people and the landscapers park their trucks and trailers on one lane of the road. So, you know, it, it's hard to get past cars that are parked. But this wouldn't trucks. contribute to or take away from a parking Take away issue. from it. It'll, it'll free up a parking space on the property. You could pull the car straight. Could you pull the car straight forward and not put the carport in? You'd, ha you'd mm -hmm. accomplish the same thing, wouldn't you, without the roof? So the parking space itself is not an issue. It's not an issue. It's okay. the heat. Okay. <laughs> the roof. I, I, I understand where you're going, but I'm just yeah. looking at it. If so the parking part of that was, in my mind, is less relevant. So as I say, we'd, we'd appreciate it if you all would grant us a variance of 12 feet into the 5-foot new side setback area, and we will still be in agreement with the old 10-foot requirement. Any additional questions? Can I just add one more piece of legalese into the mix, too? And this is from You're a case... You're going to confuse me, Peggy. This case goes back to 1961, so it's almost as old as you and I are, Michael. <laughs> no, not that and old. And it's uh, neither purchase of property with zoning restrictions on it, nor reliance that zoning will not change will constitute a hardship. And that falls under the category of the hardship cannot be self-created. Back when I was doing the Board of Adjustment many, many years ago, before you all took those over, we had many people who wanted garages on small lots or larger lots. But it just simply didn't meet the criteria from the code. So that's really what you have to look at. If you feel like the testimony given here shows you that it does meet that criteria, then you can vote for it. Otherwise, it's very specific. A variance means it's not allowed in the code. So when you want to permit it, outside of our code. That's why the criteria is so strict and so delineated and why you have to find each one. Can you read it one more time? Okay. Pardon She'd like me? to read that one more time, please? That case? Uh -huh. is that? Neither purchase of property with zoning restrictions on it nor reliance that zoning will not change will constitute a hardship. Peggy, with respect, I wouldn't quarrel with that were it not for the fact that this was, as best can I can determine, the location of a garage or carport long before the conversion of part of it to a porch occurred. So when it was originally built, it was a garage or a carport. And you put testimony as to that in the record, so it's up to the fact finders and our board to decide that at the end of the hearing. Well, it is, yes. Any additional question, Mr. Harris? Do you have anything else, Mr. Harris? No, I don't. Uh, may I ask a question? I'm sure. sorry. What was he? He just said I'm, I missed. Was there a was a carport that slab part of the old carport? Is what you're saying? And then they adjusted it, or what? I don't think they adjusted. I think they worked on it and made a porch out of the okay. North but there, half. but but you've been talking about a slab. There was never any slab with a carport that was 
further down, you know, towards the, the front setback. Well, oh, I think there was. I, let me okay. give you this. Yes. Well, that, okay. Was. You have to understand, if you have eliminated a something, you don't get the rights back. If you come into conformity, you do. there is no yeah. vesting for that. So just because they had done something past, got rid of it, you don't get the rights to come back and try try that again. I just want you yeah, to understand but, that. But before you champion your staff's position, Tim, <laughs> I want you to, I want you to yeah. bear in mind yeah. that I was speaking to Peggy's remarks and quotation. And I, I can see and I can remember that people did indeed want to have garages who'd never had garages. Okay. But in this case, there was one there once. Okay. Or, and also, we had many folks who came in with rooms that had one time been a carport that they turned into a room, and then they, in addition, wanted a garage. And that was another issue that we saw a lot at Board of Adjustment. Uh, let's move on Wait, if we're ready. Uh, the, would anybody in the public like to speak on this? Please come forward and please identify your name and if you've been sworn in. I believe I was sworn in. Okay. My name is Peter Robinson. I live at 315 Great Twig Road. I've been there since about 74, so I can probably answer a lot of questions. Um, first, though, I'd like to do a little give you guys a little update on some of your things that you need to watch in the future. Um, you put a sign out in front of this property and it said to call the planning department. I called the planning department. The lady who answered the phone said the lady who's handling this is not in today. This was on a Friday. I think it was two Fridays ago or something. She's not in. Um, I'll put you on voicemail. You leave your phone number and she'll call you back. And I never heard from you, and I left my cell phone. So last night, I was walking by that thing again, and I looked at the date, and I said, damn, that's coming up tomorrow. So I went over, and I got on the covb.org to try and figure out what the hell this was all about, because, you know, it just says a variance. And um, I brought it up, and I got the agenda. Now, I was using Chrome, okay? And uh, I kept looking for the backup material. Well, finally, I said, well, hell, I'll just print this agenda under you guys. When I went to print the agenda, the backup material. <laughs> but if you're trying to view it with Chrome, you don't get the backup material. Now, interestingly, with Explorer, so then I went and checked, and with Explorer, you do get the backup material. But on the front of the covb.org, you have maps, and it says, don't use Explorer to look at these. So... You know, I don't know whether you want to put a note in and say, don't use Chrome, use Explorer or something like that. But, yeah, thank you, know, you. We'll follow up on that. Those of us who are, you know, He's just dumb old now. citizens, we, we get a little confused. Okay, so those are, you know, just little cleanup areas as far as I go. Nope. But I'm here because I am a neighbor. I live just down the road a little bit. Where Where do you live at? Down I live at 315 Gray Twig Road. So... Here. What? How does Compared that to this house. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to oh, explain sorry. that. You've got to give me a moment here. Sorry. Okay? You've got to give me a chance to explain. Okay. And I also spoke with Bill and Michelle Jarvis. They live right next door. Okay. And On the west then, side. On the west side. Right. They live, we, we all live west. You go on down there. If you've been to Gray Twig, you got a vacant lot. I own the vacant lot, and then I have a two lots, and I live in a house there with a wall around it. Okay, but I'm going from this house. So you got this house, you got Bill and Michelle Jarvis. Okay, Bill's out of the country right now. Michelle has to go to work. Then you have a vacant house, which has been there for a long time. You know, it may be a science experiment or something. And then next to that, you have um, Greta and Bob Pierpont, okay? And I also spoke to Greta, okay? And then I also spoke to my wife, because that's very important to speak to your wife about these things. And all of us support this application. We think it's a good thing. Um, we think these people deserve to have a carport. They do have a hardship. Also, when you talk about going ahead and running you know, running a driveway around in the lots and everything. Remember, we're all on septic tanks over there. And I don't see in the layout where anybody shows where the septic tank is. I'm a guessing person, though. I mean, I am a general contractor. I build a bunch of houses in this 
county over the years. Um, I'm betting that septic tank's out front. So that becomes a real big problem if you've got to move the septic tank and figure all that stuff out. I may be wrong. It could be in the backyard, but you've got a swimming pool in the backyard, and that makes me a little suspicious that there's a septic tank back there. So the other thing is we think it looks better if you line it up like it's always been lined up. Um, and I do not remember that carport being there. The Johnston's, when I moved in, uh, a little kid named Greg Johnston used to play with my little kid, who's now 42. And uh, they would play together. And Gordon Johnston was an attorney in town. You probably remember him. And I can't remember. What? County attorney. Yeah, I think he was the county attorney. So, you know, and as, as long as I can remember, there was no carport there. So that had been, you know, covered up before then. So, uh, you know, I would strongly say to you that... Uh, you should grant this variance because it is a hardship. It'll make the neighborhood look better as far as we're concerned. And there's also, he talks about things get hot, okay, with the car. But the other reason you need a carport is because we got a lot of oak trees around there. And if you leave your car out, it's going to get stained and have all sorts of problems. And particularly about February. These people like to come down about February, you know, that's when we have our fall and our winter all at the same time. And those oak trees, you wouldn't believe how much stuff gets dumped on, the, on those cars. So I think that's a hardship right there, having a whole bunch of stuff dumped on your car and ruining your car. So those are just a couple of reasons. As I said, um, Bill and Michelle Jarvis support it. Greta Pierpont supports it. My wife and I support it. And when I was talking to Michelle, she said, you got, remember, you got this house right next door. You got Michelle and Bill. She said, the next house over, the one that's empty, that the people died and, you know, they come down now and then. They got a variance to put a garage there. When they put their garage in, they needed a variance to extend over. I'd, this is what I was told by Michelle. So this is kind of the way, you know, we like this neighborhood because it was platted back in the 20s. If you look on this thing, you'll find there's a little five-foot easement on the back. When you get down to my house, we don't have easements. They don't exist. Um, the, as he mentioned about the, the, the trees, they, they had planned, this was done in the 20s, this was going to be the grand entry to Vero Beach from the marina. And they had double lane um, roads that were planned there. And then they, had, they put in a bunch of Australian pines. And, and the reason we suddenly got this extra 45 feet is, is it wasn't when he said, but in 1987, if you remember, we had a freeze in this area. And um, I got a call from the city of Vero Beach, and they told me that I needed to take those Australian pines down in my front yard. And I said, why? And they said, because it's dangerous. They froze. They might fall on somebody. And I said, well, that's interesting, but I don't own those Australian pines. You own them. So then, this is back in the days when John Little was there. Uh, Somehow they came up with $300,000 out of the utilities. They came in, they took down all those Australian pines, and uh, they came in and they hauled us all right in this place right here, and they said, we're going to give you, I think it was 80 or 90 feet of property, and you won't argue about it. You're going to take it. And we all went, oh, okay, we'll take it. Because they didn't want the liability of that property. So you've got a huge setback now. So... This little encroachment, you know, you won't even notice it because you got this huge setback. You can barely see the stupid carport back there. <coughs> and, um, you know, I strong, we strongly support it. We, we like this neighborhood, and we like things being a little different. You know, we don't, we, don't, we don't like to be harassed by government. We like to let people stand up for what they want to do and improve the area, and this would improve our area. And we really would appreciate it if you would support those of us who are neighbors. And, and recognize this is a hardship, and improving the neighborhood is good for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Peter, thank you. Um, Peggy, uh, Peggy, I have a question of you, please. His testimony, how are we to relate to his representation of what other people think? Well, well, I had to swear, sir, I had to swear that what I tell you is the truth. 
That's how you can re represent it, and I don't lie. That's it. Okay. Right, but I, I know what you mean. You're saying that those people aren't here to be cross-examined. So you can take what he said and weigh it in your own mind and see if it's material and relevant to what you're looking at. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't questioning your integrity, but I was questioning right. how I'm supposed to interpret it. Right. Yeah. We have rules okay. under quasi-judicial yes. that the people who are saying things have to be here. Well, so it's not your integrity. when they're out of the country and they're working, my wife is working right now. She's up laying tile right now. She doesn't have time to come into these meetings. You know, we have to work for a living. Um, you know, they just can't make it. I understand so, and that. Greta, and let me assure you, Greta's busy because she's working on a deal that I got to get it approved for a lady, you know, a, a very poor lady that, you know, hopefully will get her mortgage. So those are the things that we're all trying to do. Thank you. I have um, just... Any other, maybe other public yet? Linda? Anybody else in the public like to speak? Seeing nobody else coming forward, I'll close public opinion. Um, go ahead, Linda. My question is, we're talking about, um, we've said a five-foot side setback. Now, to me, the side setback would be to the west. Am I correct? Yes. And what they're proposing is extending the carport to the south. Am I correct? Not to the west. To the front of the property. To the, the front, front of, of the property. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I may, can you make sure. a comment, please? The What's before us is they're requesting a variance. And what I heard today uh, when Mr. O'Hare was making his case, first it started out at 5 foot. Then we took a look at hearing about 12 foot. On the diagram, we think it's 13 foot. I think for clarity purposes, number one, it has to be clear, you know, what is the dimension? You know, is it going to be 12 foot? Because that's not in the paperwork here. And the diagram for us is kind of hard to read. Um, five foot is not too much if they were going to extend it. I think we're saying to the south. I also heard Mr. O'Hare state that when the original slab was poured, it could have been a carport too. So when the argument was being made under the five foot, it was br like br bringing the structure back to the original of having a carport. Uh, I understand, you know, as far as going around the back of the house, I was thinking about that. It was brought up, uh, you know, about a septic tank. They are on septic tanks over there. You got a lot of trees there. So it would be kind of hard to um, go around the house. But I'm hearing here from our planning director there's other possibilities where they could do a carport or a covering for a car. Now back to the variance that's in front of us, I think it needs to be clear if you're going to grant the variance, how many feet are you granting? As, because it's not, not clear in the paperwork. And if we're to stay on task, what's in front of us, we already heard uh, for the reasons to deny it, we also heard the conversation about the hardship end of it. That's it on my comments. Well, what I'd like to do is let, let the uh, applicant have closing arguments and then staff closing arguments also. So do you have any something else, Mr. Harry, you'd like to speak on? I don't know that it's something else, but it's speaking to Ken Day's uh, question or issue. And <clears throat> I certainly don't want to leave here with a variance that's too short for the car. <laughs> and... In looking at the drawing that was scaled a quarter inch to an inch, and it had been shrunk, the one with the dash lines showing the proposed extension. That's how it occurred. Yeah. And I had mentioned uh, 12 feet because that looked like what it would be according to some of the dimensions that were shown on that sketch. I, and I don't recall 13 feet, but... Um, you know, to fit a car, and I and I defer to your knowledge about this, Ken, more than mine. Uh, to fit a car in there, I, if we need an extra foot, then I'd ask for an extra foot because that's the whole purpose of of the uh, request for the variance. I think twelve feet will do, but 
I think I'd rather if, err on the. But if you're changing your request of variance, then it really needs to, our staff needs to have time to reply to that. No, I'm not changing it because I didn't specify in the application a dimension, I don't believe. Let the, let's let the applicant finish, Jim, and then we'll. I beg your pardon? No, I'm stopping. Looking at Tim. No, what I'm oh. saying is the board needs to know specifically exactly what the variance length is because they have to do an order. They can't do just. What I'm saying, we don't have enough information here, what you're saying, to, to do that. I mean, no, I, I don't think I'm saying that, Tim. Oh, okay. I'm just. I'm saying that we want to be able to park a car there. But that's not that's a. That's vague to me. I that's can't, vague. Can't we have I understand, a, and there are different kinds of cars, obviously. Well, we have to be able to draft an ordinance that gets recorded in the public records and yeah. runs with the land. So if we don't have an application that states exactly what you want, and we don't know that, then yeah. we can't draft such an ordinance, even should the board uh, approve it. Yeah. And it's not up to the board, in all due respect, Mr. O'Hare. You're asking the board to look at the variance of what's before us and it's where it's not our job to say how long this should be you know should it be five foot ten foot or whatever I agree the case with may you. that's we we can't really i don't think we should do that it's really up to you to tell us what you want in, in fairness i understand that and uh i don't i don't want to walk out out of here with too too short a variance um I do feel that 12 feet would be a gracious plenty. And, and frankly, I was never asked that question. Uh, I've talked to Tim and I've talked to Gail, too. Well, if, if the dimensions here have been shrunk by a, a, um, putting in a copy machine and reducing Which it, is what I, I assume I believe happened. that's what happened also now that you indicated that. I, you, have to, you almost have to have 20 feet. That's what, I think that's what you have to come up with the total. I'm trying to give some advice. I'm not necessarily... But I think 20 feet's the minimum you can get away with for a vehicle. Um, and that gives you two foot in front of the car and about 18 inches to get the door down behind. If you were doing a garage, you're not doing a garage, you're doing carports. Your doors on the side can open out. You usually use 10 feet to the width. Okay. The, if the porch goes away and it becomes now a car, part of the carport, is that correct? Yes. So, and if we had, according to this, if I can read this correctly, you're at eight feet something. And you got to get to 20. So I think that's 12. And that would just be a suggestion for, for if you want to clarify your. Could I? I'm, There's a notation on mine that says it says 13 plus or minus. So that's what my guess. Where are you seeing that? Oh, yeah. Well, I, oh yeah, there is. I, I bet that's not. A, I think it's, it's on the document, so it is. It says 13 plus or minus. You're right. So that's what I and that's read the, that to be. So then well, that's where the 13 feet. feet comes from, then. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you saw that? Did you see that? No, On that drawing here, here, right here. Right here. Oh, yeah. A little over here with 12, right. 13 plus or minus. Will the porch be incorporated into the carport? Yes, I think it will be. Okay. It, that's, is that yes, I think, or yes, it will be? I, yes, I think. <laughs> that's right. not good. Um, can and I just add Mr. something Mr. Laufer, here? from what you were saying, I was assuming you were taking in the porch area. I was. Yeah. That's, where, that's how I came up with the 20. Right. That's what I thought. Um, could I add something here for a minute? I'm looking at the overhead aerial, and I'm also looking at my um, survey map here. And as it stands, it appears that the existing porch in length is 9 feet 3 inches. 9.3. If you want to add 13 feet plus, or just say 13 feet, that comes to 22.3 feet. If you're going just the 20, that's a variance of 10.7. So we're not sure what they're asking for. And I just feel if it was a little clearer if they want to extend it past the 9.3 that's on the surveying map, then we need to know if they want to extend it to fit a car, which is 20 more feet. If they don't want to extend it that long, then we need to know exactly how long it's going to be. 
if everyone understands what I'm saying. The existing survey says it's 9.3 now for the porch, so we need to know how much they're asking for, how much more they're asking for. Does everyone see that on the survey map? Yep, I agree. Yeah. And I understand what you're saying too, Linda. Okay. Um, I just don't know whether I can get Peter Robinson to the next meeting if I have to mm. defer. <laughs> yes. Mr. Chair, are you all right with that? You've closed the public hearing. Yeah, I, 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 unless he's a witness of yours. Well, he is now. <laughs> I'm Peter right. Robinson again. Um, basically, what I would do, I mean, let's be honest. What you're really arguing about is the five feet, mm -hmm. okay? If you decide to allow the five feet, you could ha pass a motion that you will allow the five-foot encroachment subject to them providing you at the next meeting with exact square footage of what that encroachment involves in this building because you have no problem on the lot depth. You know, this thing, if, if it goes 20 feet, it isn't going to affect anything on the front yard. So, you know. That's but, an assumption but, I don't agree with. What is, what is the front yard setback there? 25, 25 feet. feet. Yeah, but I, I, when I look at that 25, a lot's going to, my opinion, has more to do than just that particular data. Okay. It's but, how it sets on the lot in general and how it's... Okay, but you haven't heard the rest of what I'm well, saying. You, you know, if you decide you're going to allow them to do that, then make it subject to them coming back with the final layout, because then it costs money for them to go get a surveyor and figure all this out. But if you're not going to allow the five feet, you know, they don't need to go figure any of this out. You know, that's really the issue. It's, it's, five, year, it's five feet on the side. That's the issue. Are you willing to do that? No, it's not. It's, it's how much of the, on the side, how far out are they coming, and how, how that impacts the entire piece of property, in my opinion. So I'm taking okay, more you than can make that 20 feet. If you made that a six-car garage across the face, a six-car carport, I would look at it differently than I would if it's a one-car carport. Right, it's a so one-car carport. Your, your distinction has to have some clarification to it, or I can't accept it. Okay, that's fine. But all I'm saying is you take five feet, and if, you, if, if it is 20 feet depth even, you're talking about 100 square feet. That's all you're talking about. And it's going to be less than that. It's going to be less than that. And the neighborhood would like them to have their carport. That's all. Believe me, your input from the neighborhood had an impact on me. Yeah. What? As your staff, the input for the neighborhood is fine, but it's immaterial. The neighborhood cannot make decisions on zoning, or we would have uh, all sorts of things going on. And there's no. But you know what? I, I, that's that's fine. But well, I'm just my telling total you. interpretation. That's why you put me on the board to make an interpretation, use my judgment on that. And if I think the neighborhood's input on that has some significance and it re it's relevant to the it does. then I think that that's where I would use it. It does judgment. on the character of the neighborhood, but it doesn't have on changing whether you can give them a setback, at, you know, that. I mean, if they were to say, if, you were, if everything else being equal, that this made a hardship, made that criteria, and they come in and say, it's going to affect our neighborhood, you clearly have met one of the criteria with that. I'm just saying that you can't have neighbors making decisions that said, oh, yeah, you can have a setback here and here. They're changing the code. Well, it has if to meet the entire criteria. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Yeah, right. and I mean, and all the criteria has to be met. Okay, that's all I'm saying, Mr. Okay. Chairman. I'm, I'm, trying I'm, very to, I just want to... I'm very sympathetic to the neighbors, but at some point... That property will be sold. There'll be another owner. What about the property? It goes next with the door? property and that's forever. That's why we have rules. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I agree yeah. with that too. Would you all consider maybe continuing this hearing to the next meeting until we can get some information that maybe is more no. specifically or specific what? to I you? I got I think it looks to me like, and I don't know if that's anything to do with zoning, but it looks to me like the owners haven't done due diligence when it comes to what are the options. What, I, what are the options? I agree. I, I agree. And then one of the things, well, and I, I'm not totally against, yeah. you know, some change Shouldn't here. Shouldn't we from be the, leaving this, Mr. Harris? That should be show? left up to him to do that. Because things are brought about septic tanks, yeah. trees. There's nothing on any map. We can't, we don't see all these constraints. We have people telling us that. Mm -hmm. But if they need to show a real hardship, and I, and that, from our standpoint, to give them extra time, I wouldn't have a problem if they want to come back. Well, well obviously, I yeah. don't want to get too short of variance. And yeah. I would appreciate the opportunity, and I apologize for not having given that information. Yeah. 